The next topic is managing Microsoft 365 subscription and tenant health. As an admin, you're going to want to create an internal service health response plan. And specific to your organization, there are a number of paths you might choose. For example, you might just use the Microsoft 365 admin app, which allows admins to monitor the status of various services from a mobile device. You can see service health information, maintenance status updates, and lots more. You might also use uh, the System Center Operations Manager Office 365 Management Pack, which includes sections on things like subscription health, service status, active incidents, resolved incidents, and the message center. You might also make a custom application that makes direct use of the Office 365 Service Communications API, which gives you real-time information about all the services, message center communications, and more. To monitor the health of Microsoft 365 services, you can use the Service Health Dashboard at the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. It gives you a comprehensive overview of all of the services. Service by service, you can check on the status of each service and its current health and any advisories. And you can also ask to receive emails when something goes wrong. And we're gonna take a look at a demo of that right now. Let's take a look at managing service health alerts. Here in the Admin Center, when I expand Show All, I've got a category called Health. And in the health category, I can go to the service health page, and this is where I'm going to see information about my service health. Now, since I just provisioned my tenant, of course, I don't really have anything going on here, but I usually will want to be advised when something happens. So what I can do is click on customize here, go and pick which services I wanna see health information for, and I can also configure email and say that I wanna receive email notifications about the service health. So I'll add my email address here and say that I wanna get information about everything, about incidents, about advisories, incidents, things that have actually happened, advisories, things that I might wanna know about, and I can pick the services that I wanna receive information about. I'll save this, and then I'll wait, you can see, up to eight hours for these changes to take effect. In order to use Microsoft 365 services, users need licenses. The licenses are all managed via Azure Active Directory. And you can see individual user licenses directly in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, but you can also view them via the Licenses Blade in the Azure AD portal. You can also use PowerShell. PowerShell provides some really nice interfaces to uh, monitoring all kinds of information about Microsoft 365 and Azure AD. For example, the Get MSOL User Commandlet returns user objects, and they include licenses properties, which allow you to see all of your users and the licenses that they have. And we're gonna take a look at a demo of this right now. Now I'm gonna show you how to monitor license allocation via the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. If I'm starting from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, this is actually in a different place. I'm gonna administer this from the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. This is the first time in this course that we've seen this particular Admin Center, but we're gonna come back here a lot. And uh, what I wanna do right now is just take a look at my users and groups licensing. So I'm gonna to go to Azure Active Directory and go and select the licenses blade here. At this point, I can decide whether I wanna see licensed features, licensing for all products, self-service signup. In this case, I wanna see all products. Particularly, I'm interested in uh, Office 365 E5. And here are all of my users and I can see uh, who they are and what licenses they have, which services have been enabled for each user and where they got their licenses assigned. Now, notice, by the way, that a couple of folks here, Alan DeYoung and Lynn Robbins, both have direct assignments and inherited assignments via the Information Technology Group. What I can also see here is groups that have licenses assigned to them. As you can see, Information Technology has an E5 license assigned. And that's one of the places that Alan and Lynn are getting their licenses. So in other words, by nature of their membership in that group, they're getting E5 licenses along with having them directly assigned. Okay, now I just wanna show you a simple example of monitoring license allocation with PowerShell. So as I already mentioned, PowerShell is just a great tool for administering Microsoft 365. And it's easy to see licensing and other information about users using the get MSOL user commandlet. So I'm gonna show you what this does here. I'm gonna run this script. And of course, the first thing it needs me to do is sign in as uh, some kind of admin here. and enter my password. And then as you can see, it just goes and it's doing something very simple. It's getting all the users looping through, only keeping the ones where is licensed is true. So in other words, only get the licensed users. 
and then loop through that collection of users writing out their sign in name and then echoing each of their licenses out to the console. For the record, we get these friendly names that don't necessarily map directly to the names of the products you're familiar with. So for example, Enterprise Premium uh, means Office 365 E5, EMS Premium means Enterprise Mobility and Security E5. Of course, there's a lot more you can do with this, but this should give a flavor for it. Microsoft 365 provides a huge number of reports that report on all different aspects of the operation of your tenancy. So for example, in the Security and Compliance Center, you can go and view auditing reports like the Office 365 audit log report that shows user and admin activity, including things like changes that have been made to administrator role groups, Azure AD reports that include information about unusual or suspicious sign-in activity. Some of the more advanced functionality here requires an additional paid Azure AD subscription. And exchange audit reports that are things like mailboxes that were accessed by people other than their owners and things like that. And then another section, DLP reports, data loss prevention reports that you can get through the Office 365 Admin Center. These are reports on things that have in some way violated DLP policies that you've configured as an admin. It allows you to go and look for things like credit card numbers and social security numbers, things that have been emailed out of the organization or that are being stored insecurely. And from the Azure AD Admin Center, you can go and view the sign-in logs that show all sign-ins, both successful and failed, conditional access, multi-factor authentication, the location where the sign-in took place, and so forth. You can also view the audit logs, which show changes to the system, including addition of users, changing role memberships, and other administrative operations. And if you have an Azure subscription, you can actually have the audit logs sent to Azure Log Analytics for further analysis. Here again, PowerShell is a really useful tool. There are a number of useful PowerShell commandlets. A couple of popular ones are get msol user, which allows you to see all the users and licensing information, and get Azure AD user, which is similar, but it's in the Azure AD module, and it has less direct access to the licensing info, but it has more information about other Azure AD attributes and get MSOL account SKU, which has summary information about current licensing plans and the available licenses in each plan. Now we're gonna see a demo of viewing sign-in logs. This is actually gonna be done through Azure Active Directory. So here from the admin center, I'm going to start by navigating to Azure Active Directory, which as you can see is actually through the Azure portal. And once I'm here, I'll go to Azure Active Directory and right here in the monitoring section, we can see sign-in logs and audit logs. Here are the sign-in logs. And this shows me the users that have signed in recently and the applications that they've signed into. We can also see non-interactive sign-ins here. And if I had any service principles set up or managed identities, we'd be able to see them as well currently. As you can see, we don't have any of those. For the record, we can also see audit logs here in Azure Active Directory, which is where we can see whether, for example, a sign-in succeeded or failed and other security operations that have been performed. Other reports and additional auditing information you're gonna to wanna to view in Microsoft 365 include things like the security and compliance reports that can be viewed via the Microsoft 365 Compliance Center and usage metrics that can be viewed via the usage page in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and information about service health and advisories that can be viewed via the Microsoft 365 Message Center. In many organizations, data loss prevention is an important service. DLP reports allow you to see violations of DLP policies, typically that you or other admins have created, based on templates. You can also create your own templates if you like. A common report to view is the DLP incidents report. A DLP incident is something where a policy has been triggered by some user action. DLP policies can monitor things like OneDrive, Exchange, SharePoint, Teams, Power BI, as well as on-prem repositories. And they watch for user actions like creating or sharing or transmitting files containing data that matches the policy. For example, we can see here, there are a couple of files that have a series of social security numbers in them or a series of credit card numbers. And right now we're gonna take a look at a demo of viewing DLP reports. This is going to be done via the Compliance Center. So here from the Admin Center, I'm going to expand and select Compliance, which brings me to the Compliance Center. Here, then, I can select the Reports page. 
And then a little ways down on the reports page, as you can see, I have the DLP incidents tile, also DLP policy matches. If I select this uh, view details option here, it shows me that there was one incident in exchange. And if I wanna see the details of the incident, I can select it here. And it tells me details about the thing that triggered this. In this case, it was an email with the subject line, the information you requested, sent by the username Megan B. It had 14 pieces of sensitive information in it and so forth. So in other words, this gives me a high level overview of all the DLP incidents that have occurred and anything I wanna know the details of, I can go and select and view it here. When something goes wrong or you need support from Microsoft, you're going to want to create a service request. This can be done directly via the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. You just go to the support section, click on new service request, and it gives you integrated search for Microsoft help and then allows you to create a support ticket which can then be monitored from the View Service Requests screen. And we're gonna take a look at an example of that right now. Let's take a look now at the process of creating a new support request. Microsoft has made this really easy from here. We can uh, go right to the support section in the admin portal and just say new service request, and then enter the, uh, enter the nature of the problem. So I'm gonna say Power BI uh, responding. And as you can see, it sort of starts out by just saying, okay, we want to go to Power Platform for this. In other words, in this case, it's redirecting me to a different admin center. So I'll sign in. And here in the Power Platform support portal, I'll go and say, okay, my problem is with Power BI Pro. And it is... Uh, say it's a problem with refreshing data. RBI not responding. In other words, first, of course, they just want us to, you know, try to troubleshoot it ourselves. But at this point, I can say, okay, this wasn't useful. So, uh, so instead, I just want to go on and say, Here's my support plan, my Power Platform subscription. And then I can go and submit a request. And I won't do this right now because I don't want to trouble the actual live support people. But in fact, when I fill in this form, it will then send a support request and I'll get added to the queue and, uh, and they'll respond uh, appropriate to the severity of the issue. 